Hi everyone, it's Tawanda from Mirunzo, and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a business flyer that looks like this one here. What I'm going to do is show you how to create the basic outline and the, and the techniques you're going to need to create something that looks like this. What I will not do is spend time on the text, adding the text layers and the icons. If you need help with that, we've got tutorials on how to add icons onto your documents. We have a tutorial on creating a flyer and we've got tutorials on creating a business card. Watching those should be able to give you the skills or equip you with the skill you're gonna need to create something that looks like this. And also, yeah, just to save time. So jumping straight into GIMP, we're gonna click on File, New, and then we're gonna click on the drop down there and I'm gonna select the A4 template. Click on Advanced, and select transparency for this tutorial I recommend we work with the transparent background click OK and then you go to image guides new guide by percentage we're definitely going to be needing guides on this one here especially the horizontal guide at 50% click OK and then we can always just add a new guide that's the vertical guide change that to vertical and click OK Right, so the first thing we're going to do is after adding our guides is I'm going to click and drag the image you're going to be using at the background. I'll make sure I add a link to that in the description below but I got the image from pexels.com and it's this one here. So just drag and drop. Right, I'm going to click convert and then we're going to scale that image. That should be fine, click scale. And then the next step for me, if you want it as, as a color image, you can leave it like that. But I want it as black and white exactly on the image, I, on the flyer I just showed you earlier on. So you're going to go to colors or right click on that layer. Go to colors and select desaturate. Click OK. And then colors again. Levels, I just need to make that look slightly darker than it is right now. And then adjust this middle pointer here. Something like that. Should be fine. And then we click OK. Now we go ahead and add a new layer. OK. Let's just rename that layer to gradient. And then I'm going to change the colors here. I'm going to put green. And then that to blue. Select the gradient tool and then change the mode here to well whatever it is that works for you I'm just gonna go to I'm gonna select FG to BG RGB click OK and then I'm gonna create my gradient like that and well, now we'll leave it at that that should be fine and now the next step is to add a new layer let's rename that to BG2 and then select the bucket tool change the colors here and fill that layer in with white like that right now let's go and right click on the BG2 layer and then select the add layer mask option click on the click on that on that option there and then for this layer we're going to need a white full transparency layer mask so make sure you have your white full transparency uh, white full opacity selected so we click add like that now i'm just going to zoom out slightly pressing command and rolling the mouse wheel up and then i'm going to select the ellipse tool we want to create that arc or circle you know cutting across this image this portion this half of the of the document or canvas so we're going to click and drag no need to press shift but you can press shift if you want because we're going to make adjustments to that so i'm just going to change the colors here put black on top select the bucket tool and fill that in then you see that now we have the gradient showing and the image underneath that Control or command shift a to deselect Let's create a new layer. 
let's rename this to circle now let's repeat the process again select the ellipse tool click and drag and then let's just make sure that they are aligned I think that's okay I'm gonna select the bucket tool now and then put the color white back on top and then fill that in command or control shift a to deselect we're gonna have the logo on the inside here and then we're gonna have a tiny little circle with another image right on the outside there so what we can do is we can go ahead and add that image we're gonna be using this one here click and drag click convert and then we adjust the size we can leave it like this for now because what we want to do is just create an ellipse use the ellipse tool to create a circle for that image and delete the other parts of that image so select the ellipse tool press shift and drag and then we're going to go to select invert and then press delete on the keyboard like that command or control shift a right now let's create another new layer click ok and then let's rename that to bottom circle still on the ellipse tool click and drag or press and shift select the bucket tool or you can always just right click edit fill with foreground color command control or control shift a okay now we go back to the image layer right here drag that to the top and it's right on top of that circle we filled in with white and then let's just position that right click on that top layer and then select the merge down option and now essentially what we've done is we've turned this into one layer now let's zoom out you can go ahead and adjust the size if need be and then click scale okay so the, the next thing is to connect these two circles the one on the inside the partial circle on the inside and the one with the image on the outside to join these two layers we're going to need to draw a straight line select the path tool let's create a new layer first and let's name that path the reason why i'm creating different layers is in the event that we want to you know move things around or you want to undo or delete something you don't have to recreate or go back several steps and then redo the stuff you've already done you can always just isolate that layer and then work on the adjustments first of all rather let's just move this outward a bit and then go back to the paths tool now we're going to create a point here let's zoom in first create a point here and then let's have another point like on the inside there now we right click edit and then we're going to go select the stroke path option so let's go for 25 stroke it's really not setting properly or just put it where you think it works for you so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the logo on the inside so I created a logo specifically for this tutorial this one here uh, called creative guru click and drag that onto the canvas uh, I'm gonna go to the ellipse tool click and drag right click select invert before we press delete just right click on the layer to make sure that the alpha channel is selected and it's not so you just click add alpha channel and then with the layer still selected you press delete command or control shift a and then let's adjust the position there before we make we add you know stuff at the bottom there you can go to your gradient layer let's duplicate it first in the event that we might need to use it i'm going to go to duplicate layer then i'm going to remove visibility and then let's reduce the transparency there let's leave it at 75 so that the image in the background really stands out and becomes clearer right now i'm just going to drag with that gradient copy still selected i'm going to click and drag that to make sure that this part has that green to blue gradient that's actually more visible and then i'm going to select the eraser adjust the size and then we're just going to remove that entire section there you can keep it there if you want but for the one I showed you at the beginning I don't have this part 
covered or with a with gradient overlay. Again, we can always make adjustments since we are creating this on individual layers, like this one here. We can move that around. Let's create a new layer. Click OK. Rename that to Path. Select the Paths tool. Click. Add the first point, then the second. Right click, Edit, Stroke Path. Let's just bring it down to 20. Like that. And then if there are paths that need still need, be, need to be erased, you can always go ahead and select the eraser. Go back to the gradient layer. Make sure you select the layer you want to erase. Right, like that. We're almost done. Now the paths that remain are the bottom. Okay, so we go back to the base layer, the BG2 layer, and make sure we select the layer mask. Now what we're going to do is create this opening here. So there are several ways you can do that. We can use the same technique we used at the top, or since this is a layer mask with a, a wide full transparency, it's a wide full transparency layer mask, you can always select your pencil tool for example, put the black color on top, adjust the size, let's see what that looks like and then just click right in the inside there like that that's one way of doing it or rather another way of doing it and the reason now why I chose to duplicate this layer is because here we don't see the gradient anymore uh, because it's from green to blue going up that's the one I'd edit so what you can do is you can actually select that layer. Let's remove visibility on that one. Select that layer. And if you want, you can just go ahead and delete that. Let's select the rectangle tool. And then press delete. Command Shift A. And then now we'll add the visibility back on this bottom layer here. And then we can just move that. You can scale it, you can adjust it, you can do whatever you want. There, like that and then it looks more or less or it complements what's right at the top there you can always just adjust it to make sure that it well suits your needs and then now let's go ahead and create a new layer there click OK with the rectangle tool selected click and drag And then I'm going to change the color here from black and then add probably a darker or lighter shade of gray. Right click, edit, fill with foreground color. Right, control or command shift A. And then you go to the layer transparency and reduce that to something that works for you. This is what, 44%. Let's put it at 40. 40 is still fine. Or you can reduce it further, or you can make it make it look darker. And then as for this shape we created there, you can always again make that look bigger or smaller. On the image on the fly, I showed you first this part is bigger, but here I have decided deliberately decided to make it smaller. So with reference to the image, to the flyer again, let's see. Right, so on this one here, I've added a QR code. I've added the contact details right at the bottom there. You can go ahead and do that as well. And then um, as for the text, like I mentioned earlier on, it really depends on the kind of flyer you want to create. Uh, but if you, I think I can just go ahead and create that top part for you here. This, this one here, grow your business with a tried and tested team of experts. Right, so you can go ahead and make adjustments to your text. Um, you can always select a part you want to be bold. Um, let's say grow. Uh, 
let's say tested let's maybe go for business these are the parts we really want to make an emphasis to whoever this is going to be reading or to to your audience so grow your business with a tried and tested team of experts we can put that all part we can make that all part all and then we can go ahead and add a new layer this is for the small horizontal bar we can just name that a small bar select the rectangle tool click and drag you can go ahead and zoom in for that to make it to make that just the necessary adjustments you need right click edit fill with foreground color command shift a we can move that to the right a little bit and then right at the bottom there that's where you add your contact details so basically that's it that's how you create a business flyer that looks well <laughs> that looks like that it now depends on the headings you want uh, are you introducing yourself and your services are you just con are you just communicating with an audience that's already been there is it a reminder is it well it really depends on your business and the kind of business model you want to be marketing or the message you want to communicate to your audience as always thank you guys for watching